Hey, good morning guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Uh, today, just an impromptu video, no editing. Uh, I was reading this month's issue of QST and there was a, a short one page article on wilderness uh, emergency communications protocols. And uh, I made a new um, laminated card uh, to put in my field pack and I'll throw it up here on the screen. And I just wanted to double check whether or not the uh, protocol was covered by our local repeater here in the state of Arizona. And I popped on the air and was able to have a cool QSO. And uh, I'm going to play it for you right now. And that's really all I want to share with you uh, in this video. Let's get right to the demo. This is Kilo Tango 1 Romeo Uniform November. I'm wondering if anybody knows about the uh, Long Tone Zero protocol and whether it's available on this repeater. Station calling. I, I missed uh, the question you were asking for. Uh, you want to repeat that? AC7EW. Yeah, thanks for getting back to me. Uh, I was reading an article in this month's issue of QST, and it was on wilderness uh, preparedness for communications, and they were describing that some repeaters support something called long tone uh, zero uh, capabilities which basically amounts to holding down the PTT button and the zero key for three seconds. And some repeaters are equipped to provide emergency instructions thereafter. You can get all of what you're saying. You're in and out of the repeater. A uh, real noisy signal. Hard to, hard to hear you. Uh, you must be on an HD. It's just barely hitting the repeater. I'm not sure what your repeater is going into, but still didn't, didn't get your question uh, because I missed uh, a lot of what you said. LPC. Uh, that... I, I, you know, that's starting to become popular. It's used a lot in Europe. Um, but I've heard a little bit of it in, in the U.S., uh, but not a lot. As far as I know, uh, uh, the ARA doesn't support that. I could be wrong, but uh, it's not something I've heard of uh, them supporting. Uh, I know it's a European thing. All right. Uh, thanks for coming back to me. I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I spend a lot of time out here in the Tonto National Forest, and... Uh, have pretty good luck with Simplex uh, when I'm on a hilltop with a uh, J-Pole, but uh, just curious to see what other um, MCOM uh, tricks I can actually employ if I ever need it out in the field. You should look up wilderness protocol, too. Uh, if you're out hiking, I've done this when I'm, uh, and I haven't done it for years. I haven't been out backpacking, but when I was out doing, uh, in wilderness areas, doing, uh, doing long-term, uh, you know, several days or a week worth of backpacking, uh, if you're interested in getting a hold of somebody you want to, or, or interesting if anything is going on, um, let's see, I don't remember wilderness protocol exactly, but you turn your radio on uh, at the top of every hour and listen for, I think it's either five or ten minutes. And if you have a problem, you do the same thing and you call then. Uh, if everybody is doing that, then you conserve battery, and at the same time, uh, if you need have problems, people can get hold of each other. That's a good wilderness protocol. Uh, I think there's more to it. I haven't used it for quite a while, so I'm, I'm rusty. Yeah, that's actually the uh, protocol that I was reading about in this month's issue of QST. And uh, they were talking about tuning to the uh, national uh, simplex frequency and then checking for five minutes at the top of the hour and then more specifically at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and 4 p.m. to coincide with the start of people's hikes, their lunchtime, and the time that typically people are airlifted out, which tends to be around 4 p.m. And that sounds reasonable. I have a QST. I haven't even looked at uh, this much QST yet. But, um, yeah, it actually sounds, that, that sounds uh, reasonable and, and within what I'm used to. It's been uh, 20 years since I was hiking, so I, I can't tell you what it is now, how things work. But, yeah, I, there are several protocols I know like that, and, and I'm sure they work well. I kind of like the idea personally of uh, anybody that's out uh, in the area. I tend to keep try and keep one uh, of my one side of my uh, mobile rigs tuned to the uh, one six or one forty six uh, for our national uh, simplex. So uh, that way I can hear if anybody calls. But anyway, yeah, I like the idea of the protocols. And uh, I'm wondering if you would mind if I um, can share this on YouTube. I started to record it. Uh, I'm a bit of a YouTuber that's been experimenting with emergency communications. And 
uh, this conversation has been excellent and I think would be a great service for everybody. So uh, yeah, if you can, uh, what's the name? And let me know if you uh, don't mind if I share this with everyone. Uh, MCOM is kind of uh, an area that I'm looking at right now, so I do appreciate you getting back to me and uh, helping out in New Ham. I'm Don. You have a great day. Uh, appreciate anybody that likes to, to get into MCOM. Uh, that's kind of one of the reasons I got into Ham Radio years ago. And one of the things I do, although I like HF as well, uh, when I get on it. So. Um, I really appreciate you guys uh, sticking around. Uh, probably not the most interesting thing to watch on YouTube. Uh, if you're still watching, I'm going to do one thing as a public service to everybody. Uh, I'm not going to monetize the channel anymore through ads on YouTube. They will be ad-free. Um, I just want to make it fun and, again, just kind of pay it forward to, to everyone. All right, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.